Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel, where once again we're trying to bring old discarded technology back to life. And this time it's a collection of three antique telescopes and this box of random assorted telescope junk. I got these really cheap at an auction. I don't know if they work. Now, I know almost nothing about telescopes. I've never owned a real one. I've played around with little spotting scopes and binoculars and stuff, but I've never had a good big one that I can use for astronomy. They come with a box of random stuff. We've got this big heavy thing. We've got this mysterious detonator thing. Uh, we've got this unlabeled electronics box that does something, but nobody bothered to put any uh, notes on it as to what it does, so that seems legit. This box that smells like grandma's basement on the inside and might be 50% eyepieces and 50% mice, so I'm not sure what's in there exactly. And then these super janky tripods, which may or may not be stable enough to actually use. So I've done a little more research, and this largest telescope, I believe, is a Criterion Dynascope model RV6. It's from the 1960s. It's got approximately a 6-inch reflector, or about 152 millimeter. Now, it looks like there's various places you can put the reflector. I'm not sure why it's so far forward. I would think that if the tube is this long, you want the mirror at the very back of it, but again, I don't know much about telescopes. Now, this is a Bakelite tube. That was one of the first plastics invented in the 1950s, and it's got some issues. It's got some crazing. It's got some discoloration. Um, I don't know yet if it's worth sanding this down and trying to repaint it. I think I want to see if I can get the telescope itself working before I do cosmetic stuff. And I think I am going to focus on this biggest one. It is the largest, which I think means it should give the best picture and the most magnification. And it's the most complete. It has the little rangefinder scope. It has the eyepiece mount. It has the rings. These other telescope tubes are missing some of those parts, although they might be in the box of junk here. But for now, I think I'm going to focus on the Criterion. Now, apparently this originally came with a motorized equatorial mount, which meant it would automatically follow the Earth's rotation. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to have been included in the box of junk here, and even the parts of those mounts for this particular telescope are around $250 used, so I probably won't be doing that. I'm going to just try to fabricate myself a simple azimuth elevation mount, I might actually incorporate one of my motorized pan-tilt zoom mounts from my radio telescope and see what that does. Okay, so first up we should find out what is this thing actually missing, what needs to be cleaned, what needs to be fixed. So it does appear to have the primary mirror down in there, although it's a little dirty. And I believe this is the secondary mirror in this spider arrangement. And then as I said, it's got the eyepiece holder and it's got the little aiming scope. Although that aiming scope is very loose. So I think first off we're going to want to take the mirrors out of there, or at least that primary mirror, and clean it. So here's our primary mirror, which honestly doesn't look great. I don't know if some of those spots are rust spots. There's a pretty good scratch here, and obviously it's covered in dust. So we're going to do what we can with this. I found some instructions online for how to clean telescope mirrors. So... Gonna try my best, but I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to do with this thing. As far as I can tell, this secondary mirror looks pretty clean, so I think we're not gonna mess with that. All the instructions online say to avoid adjusting your secondary mirror, if at all possible. I don't think we have to right now, so we're just not gonna touch it. I'm also gonna clean and dust the rest of this tube. I'm not going to deal with the discoloration on the Bakelite right now. Okay, so here's our main mirror. There were a few little blemishes that wouldn't come out, and it's definitely a few scratches. It's not 100% perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. There still seems to be some stuff in there, but uh, it looks better than it was. So we're going to let that dry. We're going to go ahead and wipe down the tube. All right, I'm trying to excavate what I think are eyepieces out of this disgusting box of decaying 1960s foam. Um, if you have anything stored in 1960s foam, just, ugh, gross. This is terrible stuff. May or may not try to save this box. Honestly, I might just throw that thing away, because it is gross in there. Um, this all seems to be bits of the other two telescopes, eyepieces and mirrors and whatnot. 
Uh, still don't know what this thing is. I still don't know what that thing is. It seems to be some kind of battery-powered eyepiece. Um, maybe it's got like an LCD filter in it for looking at the sun or something. I don't know. It looks like military surplus to me. And then we've got this wide array of eyepieces, which may or may not go to the big telescope that I'm working with. We're going to try to clear the rest of the foam out of those and play around with them a little bit. So I've got all my eyepieces cleaned, except for this one, which still has a lot of that gross foam jammed into there. I'm going to have to hit that with compressed air or something. So I still don't know what I've got here. I have some that appear to be original to this scope, uh, the Criterion. And then I have some of these that are, um, I guess, university optics. I don't know if that's good or a bad brand. I also have some that appear to fit a smaller eyepiece holder, so these might be for one of those other telescopes that I got in parts. Then there's all these extra tubes and adapters and thingies. I Yeah, again, I, I don't know what half of this does. Now that these are all clean, I can use one of my auction tackle boxes to keep them all organized. Some people online told me that all the new holes in this tube and the forward mounting of the mirror were probably for astrophotography because old cameras had a focusing element or sensor back beyond the lens, like a digital SLR or something. Nowadays it seems like phone sensors are just as good or better than a lot of SLRs, so if I do any astrophotography with this I'll probably just do it with a phone, which means the sensor is going to be right there where my eye would be. So I'm going to mount it right at the back where it was originally, and we're going to see how that does. I have no idea how you align these little finder scopes with the main scope. I guess I'll just get them to point approximately the same direction and then maybe try to adjust it. Someone online also said it looks like I have a larger eyepiece holder here, which is apparently a good thing, and that I have some sort of aftermarket or replacement uh, spider or secondary mirror assembly. I barely know what they're talking about there, but I'm going to assume those are upgrades. Now that everything's at least somewhat cleaned up, we can work on getting the telescope onto the tripod. I've showed my tripod mounted pan tilt zoom mount from some other videos that I use with my radio telescope or old satellite dish. And I think I want to leave that alone for now, but I think that I also have another one. Maybe in here. It's around here somewhere. Yes, that thing. So this appears to be one of those instances where if you hoard enough junk, eventually thing A is going to fit in thing B without even trying. So it looks like the pins on this guy are actually going to fit into the mounts on my PTZ thing. I just have to move the rings together a little bit on the tube, and then I think they'll go right in there without any other uh, adaptation or anything else. Alright, so as cool as that looks, it's not actually all smooth sailing with this pan tilt zoom mount. Just like with the satellite dish, the telescope is really too heavy and the center of balance is too far out for that little mount. So if I tip it too far one way or the other, it just overloads the little motor, the whole thing just kind of collapses. The other problem with my little aiming system here is that it's all analog, it's just me pushing buttons on this thing. I never got around to doing computer control for these 24 volt AC PTZ mounts, and this is about the finest I can get for turning side to side. That's a big swing, so if I'm trying to narrow in on something like a star or a nebula, I'm gonna just blow right past it. I need a lot more finer grain control. Now to partially address the balance issue, I do have this giant counterweight, and I coincidentally have this aluminum rod that just fits down the counterweight precisely. I, Again, this is a case of I have enough junk where eventually I'll have two pieces that fit, even though they have nothing to do with each other. Of course, two things fitting together is kind of the limit. I can't get the rod to actually fit onto the telescope without copious use of zip ties. So, it's looking less and less professional here. I think I could also add a counterweight up here, or at least I think that's what this little bracket is for. I'm not entirely sure. The center hole on this is not the same as the center hole on this other bracket, so this might not even be the correct uh, counterweight for this telescope. Who knows? 
anyway, I think I should have enough junk lying around that I could just come up with a counterweight on the fly here. And if I need to, I could also clamp this to keep it from creeping up and down. So at this point, let's go out and try to do some observations with this thing. Okay, it's now nighttime as you can see, but since we are in the city, there's a lot of light pollution around, so we can't really see that many stars. Fortunately, the moon's out, and it's pretty full today, so we might be able to get a good shot at that. For reference, here's what the moon looks like with the 60 power zoom on my Handycam. So I'm aimed at the moon, but it's still not focusing much. I think this is what they were talking about with in focus, where I can focus the eyepiece down, down, closer and closer, where it almost focuses, but not quite. So I think what I need to do is take that mirror cell and move it back up the way it was when I found it. Maybe not all the way up, but at least a little bit in from the very end of the tube. All right. All right, now we're getting somewhere. I've got that mirror moved up two stops. It's not all the way as far forward as it was before, but it's not all the way at the back either. And we're actually getting a really nice picture of the moon now. Well, I've pulled up Google Sky Map to see what else can I see here. Well, there's the moon, obviously. Looks like Saturn's over there. We've supposedly got a meteor shower, but uh, that full moon's going to wipe anything out, plus all the uh, light pollution here in the city. And we've got Saturn right over here. I don't know if the scope is going to be stable enough with my redneck rig here, but I guess we can give it a try. Okay, that is actually really cool. I can just barely make out Saturn's rings. Now I'm on a pretty low magnification here for a wide field of view. I think if I'm really careful and I don't touch this, I can swap out the eyepieces and get a closer look. Okay, I think this is a good proof of concept that the telescope itself actually works. My mounting system doesn't work at all. It's too imprecise, uh, it's too inconsistent, and it can't handle the weight of the telescope. So I think we're gonna get rid of this electronic pan tilt zoom mount. We're gonna go with something else. That might have to be another video. I think we're gonna wrap this one up. We've proven that the telescope is a functional telescope. Uh, we've proven that we can find stuff in the sky. We can see planets, we can see the moon. It works pretty well. I haven't even collimated it properly yet, so I'm not even getting the best picture I could. We're gonna come back to this in a part two. I'm gonna make a better mount. We're gonna to try to take this somewhere out away from the city where there's less light pollution and where we can actually get a little better view of the sky. So stay tuned for that one. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.